You've been researching how to buy a house and you probably know by now getting pre-qualified or pre-approved is one of the first essential steps to the process. Might I even say the first step you need to take. And it sounds like something as simple as calling a lender, but something so simple can be turned into something so terrible. Just like this color shirt I'm wearing. Is it yellow, mustard, baby poop, yellow, green? I don't know. Maybe the lights behind me isn't helping. Is that better? about green but anyways in today's video i want to talk to you about the crucial mistakes that you need to make sure to avoid when you're in the pre-qualification process let's start off by clarifying what it means to pre-qualify or pre-approve essentially when it's time for you to see how much of house you qualify for you have a conversation with a loan officer or a mortgage broker mortgage banker someone who is essentially licensed to take your application to then present it to an uh, underwriter or some kind of underwriting system based off a lot of factors like your debt to income ratio, your credit score, your job history, uh, all that stuff. They'll be able to come back and tell you, hey, you're pre-approved for that amount. Now, let's stop here and, and let's address something. The question I get all the freaking time is, Javier, should I talk to the agent first or the lender first? This is going to sound super shocking, but... It should be universally low, low, known, known that you should speak to a lender first. I know, shocking. But the thing is, is that this idea that you should go talk to the person who's in charge of the sale of the house, or in other words, a realtor. So then they have the power to choose which lender they send you to is kind of scary. And once again, I'm totally being hypocrite, hypocrite here. Here I am being a realtor, and I personally always prefer when a client comes to me first. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't talk to the realtor first. You might talk to the realtor first. I'm saying that the actual real raw work should begin with the lender because before you go look at any houses and start the sales process, you have to know if you fit the mold. You want to know if you even pre-approve. You don't want to go waste your valuable time and energy looking at properties, falling in love, getting emotional emotional stake to these houses only to find out that you don't even qualify for it and the real houses you're going to qualify for are nothing compared to that one so if your realtor says hey let's go look at some houses and you're not even pre-approved ah! no don't do it you know you might want to do it you know you're excited but just stop yourself because really think about what you're doing here you want to make sure to go get the pre-approval done first okay now the reason why realtors are usually the first people that people talk to is because quite frankly we market towards consumers we are doing open houses we have possessions of the houses you go on zillow you go on realtor.com and there is a realtor there with a smile and a lot of times you know you, you start that initiation first and then they then send you to their preferred lender now lenders there it's very rare but most of the time they're not marketing towards you they're marketing towards realtors you're taking realtors out to lunch they're trying to service real estate agents so that way they get those leads very rarely do lenders actually promote themselves to out there so so in short words here's my super duper efficient list of who you, who you, who you should hire first okay if you have a trusted friend or family member use them first go to them first i don't care if they're a realtor or lender you reach out to them first because they trust you they're going to take care of you they're going to get you connected if you don't have anyone that fits that bill then you hopefully a few months before you start looking you start following lenders you start following realtors online and you start really getting an idea of who you like or if you don't want to take that approach call a few friends family members and ask for their recommended realtor or lender now you don't call these people right away you start researching them online do you like them do you like the reviews do you like their social media you know nowadays we're in a world whether you like it or not where the way you present yourself online is going to be the best form of yourself and if the best form of themselves is not even attractive enough not attractive as in physical looks because i got you beat every single time on that what? talking more about like what kind of person you are and they, that's the kind of energy you want to be around and that's the best version of themselves online if that's not even good enough then you're probably not going to like them in person quite, quite frankly the best realtors and lenders out there don't even have social media they're just like these people that just hustle and they don't really do that but unfortunately it's hard to find those people you know how are you going to do that the second mistake that most people do with their pre-approval is this it's to shop around for the wrong things now I'm going to put this into two categories, okay? The first category is for those buyers out there that don't give a crap about relationships. They want the cheapest number. They don't care who gives it to them or what they have to do to get it. 
you want a 2.61% interest rate and you're going to freaking find it. You don't care how many heads you have to smash, how many yellow mustard shirts you have to buy. You're going to find the lowest number. And then there's a the second folks that are like, yes, of course I want a good deal, but I also want to be taken care of. I don't want to be taken advantage of here. I want to make sure that if I have questions at freaking Saturday at 4 p.m., I don't have to wait till freaking Tuesday at noon to get a call back. I want to make sure there's someone there to guide me and reassure me. Okay. There's no wrong or right here. The second option are people that are just like, I'll take any interest. No, of course they want the best interest rate. Likewise, the first people aren't like complete robots or I get it. There's, but usually you're going to fit into one of these two bills. You probably were expecting me for my second one to say, make sure to get more than three uh, loans or make sure to shop around your loan. That's, I don't agree with this sentiment because here's the thing. If you are totally the first category, like 2A, that's the year for you. You're going to love that. Yes, 100% shop around your loan. You probably didn't need me to tell you that you were already going to do that. And I'll give you my list of lender, lenders that I recommend you shop around for to get the best deal a little bit later. But you don't need me to tell you that because that's something you were going to do already. Now, for everybody else, the reason why I didn't say shop around five lenders or two lenders or three lenders is because I feel you're shopping around for the wrong thing. Now, when you shop around lenders, okay, the interest rate they give you isn't the guaranteed rate. It's not the rate that they're going to guarantee for sure. It's either an estimate of the last 30 days what they're able to give, or it's a very rough estimate of what they think they're going to be able to get you, depending on either the formula they're using to calculate interest rates, how they're going, or anything along those lines. So that rate they're giving you or you're quoting being quoted is not guaranteed. And the thing you can shop around for sure are the closing fees. Like what are they charging for like the underwriting fee and stuff like that. So of course, I'm not telling you to be blind and not look at these numbers. Definitely look at the interest rate, looking at the closing costs and all that stuff. But what I'm saying is a first time home buyer who's a little nervous, these are not the only factors you need to be shopping around for. The robots are gonna look at the details. Let them look at that for you you're shopping around the wrong categories. You just also need to shop around for the following things. Character, are they reliable? Do they communicate effectively? Do they communicate promptly? I'm not, I don't expect people to respond with me within seconds. I just expect you to respond to me saying, hey, I can't answer right now, but I'll touch base in an hour. Everybody has different levels of it. And sometimes that agent or lender might seem very amazing online, but maybe they're just a little too busy. And you know what? I'm guilty of that sometimes too. So yes, when you're look shopping around these guys, looking numbers, wanna look at their character, wanna look at, are they, this is this the type of person that I want working for me? Because the fact is they're not gonna be able to guarantee any rate until you're under contract. And who is going to be the one that really is going to stand up for you when the rubber hits the road? That's the second big mistake people make is just simply shopping around for numbers and not for the character and for other things like that. Now, uh, as a little bonus there, like I said, I was going to give you what my, if you're going to shop around, you know, two, three, four lenders, this is what I recommend you do. Uh, get a quote from an online lender, uh, literally better mortgage, any of those other ones, they're going to probably be the cheapest out of everybody, but you want to use this tactfully. Okay. So get that and don't just settle for the email they send you saying, Hey, you're pre-approved. No, like really when they reach out to you, say, I need my state pre-qualification form. I am in, I would say Arizona, they require an AAR pre-qualification form. So to tell them, I don't want just the email. I want my state's version of the pre-qualification form. Once you do that, you want to talk to a lo local mortgage banker or broker. Mortgage banker, mortgage brokers are those that are, you know, local based, working usually with realtors. Um, not necessarily, they don't usually have like local locations, but um, I'm sure if you talk to an agent, they'll recommend you a few. The third one is going to be a credit union of some sorts. Now I'm throwing this as a gimme. I don't really think they're the best every single time. Um, but you know, if it makes you feel better, shop around with the credit union, uh, reach out to them, especially if you're a member of one and see what they do. And of course the fourth and final one being a big bank, you know, talk to bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, whatever. So when you're talking to those last two, I told you, you want to make sure to ask how reliable, like how efficient you are. Cause one of the biggest complaints we get from those type of companies is they take forever to close. Um, very important that you talk to them saying, are you going to be available on a Saturday afternoon? Are you going to be able to nine to five? I need you, you, you to be ready and available for me. You really insist on getting all four of them. There's going to be, there's going to be two of them. There's going to be one that has the best numbers and there's going to be one that you had a better connection with. Okay. Very rarely do you get one, the best numbers and best connection with what you want to do here is you send your best number, uh, loan estimate to the lender who you had the better connection with. And you're going to say, Hey, I really want to work with you. I've been shopping around my loan. Can you please, please, please do me a favor here and do your best to match these numbers. If not, unfortunately, I'm going to have to work with the other one. 
and see what they can do. Even if they kind of meet you like, like a little halfway or they're like, they can only match it to a certain point. That's fine. You're going to get the better numbers because you told them already that you like working with them and you want to work with them. They're going to feel that if they really step up here, they're going to guarantee to get you as a client. And that's going to put you in the best spot to get a better deal. The third and final mistake you can make when you're pre-qualifying or pre-approving uh, for a mortgage is to just simply get one loan. So here's the thing. People by now know that there's FHA loans, there's conventional loans, or you might be a veteran, you go for VA, you might be thinking there's down payment assistance, and you talk to a lender and they come back and they go, hey, here you are, you're pre-approved for FHA, congrats. And you're just like, cool. Then you guys find me on YouTube and you email me, I'm here, they're telling me I'll they qualify for FHA, what do I do? Okay, for some reason, all you guys are scared to talk to your lender. Don't, that's, that should be another one. Don't be scared to talk to your lender. They don't ask for different scenarios, right? So the lenders automatically can give you one scenario. Like very rarely is the lender gonna come to you and say, hey, so here's the different options you qualified for. That's like an amazing lender. And if your lender does that originally, send them this video and, and tell them I'm giving them a wink of approval. A lot of them just send you like the, what this is what I think you want. No, like tell them to give you the different scenarios. Tell me, if FHA doesn't make sense for me, I don't give a sh Tell me what the numbers look like with FHA. Tell me how the numbers look like for conventional, 3%, 5%, 10% down. Tell me how the numbers look for down payment assistance. Give me the closing cost estimate. Give me the estimated interest rate. Give me the estimated monthly payment. Let me as the buyer choose what is best for me. Or in this case, you, you're there to be educated and guided, but you're not there to be, have the decisions made for you. This is also very crucial when you're like like 690 or 680 and you're almost a conventional and they just throw you an FHA approval. Just be like, dude, g give me what I need to do to get my, my score up to conventional and tell me what the numbers are going to look like then so I can make the decision to see if it's actually going to be worth to do the little extra effort. I know this might not seem like, oh, it's a mistake that people make because it's something that lenders should just simply do, but unfortunately they don't. So take the initiative to make them step up and say, hey, I want the different scenarios. This would be really great if to give you extra buying power. She might qualify for 10% down and 5% down. Well, having those both pre-approvals ready to go is helpful because you might find a house where you might have to give a little to the seller. You know, that 5% might have to go somewhere else. So you're going to then submit the 5% pre-approval. When you're also doing this, make sure that you get two kind of pre-approvals, okay? Make sure you get the pre-approval for with the monthly payment that you want and make sure to get the pre-approval for the max pre-qualification amount. Don't show your realtor the max pre-qualification amount one. Don't show, I mean, if you trust them, show it to them, but you know, try to stay, use this one and only pull out the one with the max pre-qual unless for a really good house, you know what I mean? So that's it guys, those are the top three pre-approval tips, uh, mistakes uh, meant to avoid when you're pre-qualification for a frick, what the heck am I saying? <sighs> Let me know if you've maybe made one of these mistakes or if one of these tips were extra helpful or maybe if you have any tips, you know what I mean? If you're looking for an agent referral, I have a great program down below. Click the link in the description to get an agent referral in any state in the country. Go ahead and check it out. And other than that, thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Have a good day. 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 Day.